Here we have a 2018 Tesla Model 3 long range rear wheel drive. It's actually a rarer version of the Tesla Model 3. Uh, a long range rear wheel drive, at least in North America, is only offered for a couple of years as far as I know. I've seen a few 2017, a lot of 2018s, and maybe a handful of 2019s. Uh, so the Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive, um, long range. Let's pull it up right here. So the dual electric motor one, uh, which pretty much in North America, all uh, you know, by 2019, all the long range versions of the Model 3 are uh, dual motor, all wheel drive. So it has a motor in the front and a motor in the back, which makes it all wheel drive. Also makes it a little bit quicker. Uh, this one just has a motor in the back. So it's just rear wheel drive, but it still has a long range battery pack. But uh, one advantage of having uh, just one electric motor is actually it's a little bit more efficient than the all-wheel drive because, uh, you know, the motor in the front adds weight to it. And, you know, having two motors using electricity versus one, it's also going to suck electricity, you know, suck down electricity out of the battery a little bit faster. So the rear-wheel drive Model 3 is actually the most efficient version of the Model 3 for a number of reasons. Um, you know, and a big part of that is just, uh, you know, weight and just having one electric motor versus two. And it's generally the case if you look at most uh, other EVs, like the, you know, like for instance, a good example, like the Mustang Mach-E, you'll find that the comparable rear wheel drive ones with similar battery sizes versus the all wheel drive have, the rear wheel drives have a longer range. So if you're looking at to eke out the most range you can out of your EV or Tesla, a long range uh, rear wheel drive like this one might be a good one to consider. Um, the EPA, uh, EPA uh, range uh, when fully uh, charged on this one is about 320 miles. But in the real world, you know, m most for daily driving, it's kind of probably going to look at, like we have here, we have this charged to 95%, it's 272 miles. Uh, things can affect uh, the range of the vehicle. Temperature, it's 45 degrees out. Um, so, you know, if it was a little bit warmer, this probably would get a little bit better range. Uh, you know, a lot of things can affect it, you know, driving on the highway, uh, the uh, amount of air pressure in your tires, uh, things like that can affect the range of a Tesla. And I think they've upgraded the software to uh, take that stuff into consideration, you know, outside ambient temperature, air pressure in the tires to have a better uh, calculation of range. Uh, some people, they don't even like to uh, have the range. Uh, another option, kind of like your iPhone <laughs> or smartphone, you can do percentage. So 92%, so it's 92% uh, 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 battery capacity, uh, obviously versus, so there's another 8% to go, um, or you can put it back to distance. Okay, so let's talk, I have a ten tendency to ramble on about these things. Okay, let's talk more about this uh, Model 3. I'm a big fan of Tesla products. I actually have a Model 3 Standard Range Plus, a 2019. Looks almost exactly like this one. This one just has a bigger battery than mine. Um, I'm a big fan of Tesla products as a used car manager. You know, I buy most of the used cars for our dealership. Uh, so I like to buy Teslas. You know, at any given time, we have about 10 pre-owned Teslas in stock. We've had hundreds of them that we've bought and sold over the years through the store. And they're great vehicles. If you're looking for a battery electric vehicle, I think, uh, you know, Tesla is the best by far for a number of reasons. They've been making EVs for longer than almost everyone else. They started making their first EVs. Uh, 2008, 2010 with the Tesla Roadster. And they have more EVs on the road than almost, I think at this point there's a, about 3 million Teslas on the road. So they have a lot of data, a lot of research into thermal management, uh, you know, making battery packs that are robust and uh, have minimal amount of degradation. Uh, you know, that's the thing is that all batteries are created equal. And it's not just the uh, batteries, because a lot of the batteries that they get are, you know, made sometimes by Panasonic or LG. So, you know, all the batteries that, you know, these manufacturers use in their EVs, they're really not that different. I mean, they're all the same, but what it really comes down to is the software, uh, you know, the software that connects to the batteries, you know, extracting power out of them and the thermal management, how good of a job do you do, you know, cooling the batteries? Because if batteries do get too hot uh, uh, over a long period of time, they can degrade faster. Generally, you know, the jury's been out. There's Teslas out there with a million miles, 500,000 miles, 100, 200,000 miles. Uh, the ba battery degradation in Tesla is, you know, fairly low. I think it's maybe like 1%, uh, you know, 1% every year. So maybe after 20 years, uh, if that, you know, your battery will be at 20% capacity, which isn't too bad, you know. <laughs> after 20 years, they'll probably have, you know, 150, 200,000 miles at it. So still having 80% capacity of your battery versus 100, that's not too bad. 
Um, you have a lot of warranty and uh, generally not too much to go wrong. You know, with an electric car, you have dozens of moving parts versus a gas car that has thousands of moving parts. And gas cars are just getting so complex. You know, I see it myself. I have to run cars through the shop. I'm picking up and dropping cars off at other dealerships that we have for warranty work and things like that. And, um, you know, obviously there is an advantage of a gas car versus electric car, car where you can go to a gas pump and fill it up with gas. But uh, when you look at the um, amount of money you're saving, not just off gas, but maintenance, uh, that really is an eye opener because there's not a whole lot to do as far as maintenance goes. You know, you have tires uh, that can wear out, wiper blades, you know, there's a uh, cabin filter. Uh, maybe every once in a while you have to replace the brake, brake fluid, but you know, there's no big 60K, 90K services, no timing belts, timing chains, spark plugs, no catalytic converters that can get stolen or go bad. No, you know, high pressure fuel pumps or emission control systems or, you know, uh, you know, sensors that can, you know, trip check engine lights and stuff that <laughs> we see a lot, a whole lot less to go wrong. Don't get me wrong. Things go wrong on Tesla's, but you know, uh, I think it's at a generally lower wear rate than gas cars. And that's my opinion, but it's also off personal observation of running, you know, you know, hundreds and hundreds of cars through the shop a year. And, uh, you know, seeing how cars hold up, see how cars come in, you know, come and trade. I like Teslas, you know, because we don't like to have to, you know, get a used car for our inventory and have to spend a lot of money in the shop because, you know, that takes away profit from us. The nice thing about Teslas is generally when I buy them, uh, they don't really need anything in the shop except maybe tires. Um, you know, brakes, they last a long time too. Brakes, maybe 150,000 miles, if not longer. Because it has regenerative braking when you, uh, you know, regenerative braking uses the electric motor to slow the vehicle down, recapturing the uh, energy and putting it back in the battery. So your actual brakes don't get used that much, uh, you know, unless you're doing like heavy braking or things like that. So uh, cost savings start to appeal all over the place. Okay, so, um, you know, charging is pretty easy with Tesla's. You can use the uh, screen here to navigate you to supercharging. You see there's two superchargers fairly close to us. Um, there's a lot of superchargers in Washington. Pretty much uh, Tesla has 30,000 superchargers throughout the world, the majority of them in the United States. So you can pretty much drive almost anywhere in the U.S. and be able to, uh, you know, fast charge your Tesla. It's very seamless. You have a credit card hooked up with your Tesla account. You just back into a charger, plug it in. It's all automatically billed to you. Uh, you don't have to mess with buttons or credit cards or anything like that. And if you want to uh, plan a trip, it'll figure out for you too. Let's say we're going to go to Spokane. Okay. It'll figure out my whole trip for me. And it looks like I will make it to... Um, so it's going to have me uh, supercharge in Ellensburg. I'll arrive with 25% uh, battery left and I'll charge for 40 minutes. And then I'll make it to uh, Spokane. So uh, with a full charge, I just need to stop once on a trip to uh, you know Spokane. And honestly, driving from Tacoma to Spokane, you know... I'm going to probably want to get out for a little bit for a break to stretch my legs. So uh, I always welcome a little stop at the supercharger. I don't do it a ton. I don't, you know, drive maybe 30, 40 miles a day, so I don't have to supercharge a lot. But sometimes uh, doing stuff, uh, you know, for work, I'll take a Tesla and I'll have to supercharge it. Sometimes on a road trip in my Tesla, I'll have to supercharge it. And it's nice, you know, you sit back, you can listen to the radio. Uh, you can watch Netflix, Hulu, things like that. You can play video games. Uh, so, you know. It's pretty amazing. And, uh, you know, the over there updates is another amazing thing. You know, this is a vehicle that's constantly getting better, even though it's older. This is a 2018. So for years, this did not have a blind spot camera. But last Christmas, December of 2021, Tesla did an over there update. And boom, they figured out they can activate the cameras on the fenders. And now you have blind spot cameras and you put the signals on. That's just a drop in the bucket. They're adding video games. The whole user interface was actually redesigned a few times since this car has gone out. Um, they're constantly adding features. All these over updates are generally free and they improve the vehicle. They make it safer. And that's the thing, like some people will ridicule Tesla's like, I don't like the sparse interiors in Tesla's. I like tactile buttons that I can, that I can touch. Well, the thing with tactile buttons is that they're there forever. You're not going to upgrade or change them. Uh, since the majority of the functionality is handled here, it's infinitely configurable. Kind of like, you know, your iPhone or your iPad, you can get a, you know, big update from uh, Apple and the whole display can change, it can look better, they can add features. Well, it's the same type of deal with Tesla. And Tesla also has an amazing, um, it also has an amazing app 
Uh, so you, you're very connected to the vehicle. You can use your phone as a key. Uh, what I really like is uh, when I get out of the shower in the morning, uh, the first thing that I do is I put the heat on or I can hit the frost car and the whole car will be warmed up or defrosted. I'll put my heated seats on. Um, it's amazing. You can track where your vehicle is on your phone. You have sentry mode so you can pull up like live camera views of your vehicle uh, remotely from your phone. Uh, I can just go on and on. And even though the Tesla Model 3 is a compact, there's lots of space, the trunk is fairly large. Even though this is about the same size of competing gas vehicles, just because there's no gas engine, the layout of the batteries, it has a lot more space in vehicles with gas engines that are similar in size. Look at there would be a gas tank here, but no gas tank, you have even more storage. Really beautiful vehicle as well. Uh, light, nice understated lines. It's not really aggressive curves and stuff, but it has an understated beauty to it. Uh, it's grown on me over the years. I'm quite fond of the way they look. Not everyone's crazy about them. Very safe. One of the safest vehicles actually ever tested by the NHTSA. One of the lowest probability of injury in an accident out of any other vehicle on the road. <laughs> So, I mean, there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of perks to this Tesla. Here's this amazing app. Like, if I want to open the, the frunk, just go like that. And then, boom, that's opened. And you have uh, more space here. It's also a safety feature. This is a crumple zone that's bigger, 60% bigger than a, a gas car with an engine in the front. You have all this space to absorb energy in an accident, in a frontal collision. Also, the weight of the batteries. The batteries weigh a lot, and they're very low. They're only about a foot off the ground, so very, very low rollover risk. Almost impossible to roll over, and if it does happen to roll over on its roof, the weight of the batteries are just gonna plop it right back in its wheels. And that weight of the batteries is great for handling. This thing uh, just is planted to the ground. <laughs> uh, hardly any body roll. And then you have excellent acceleration, zero to 60, a little over five seconds, top speed around 140 miles an hour. This is not the fastest, you know, version of the Model 3 setup performance, but it's very fast. In fact, it's faster than a lot of vehicles on the road. It's so easy. I don't even really have to dip into the throttle on mine, and um, I can just easily just uh, take off and pass cars, and uh, it just gives me a feel of control. And the thing is, uh, you know, it has one gear, there's no downshifting, there's no, you know, waiting for the engine to rev when you hit the throttle to reach its power blend. You just have instant, you know, acceleration as soon as, soon as you hit the throttle. It's a completely different driving experience. Quite fun. Thanks so much for taking the time today to watch this video. Hopefully we see you soon and have a wonderful day.